The Notre Dame campus is ablaze with the hues of autumn. And this fall has brought new colors to Notre Dame Stadium, the brown and gold of Western Michigan University, playing the Irish for the first time since 1920. The Broncos are members of the Mid-American Conference and are well known to Brian Kelly, who honed his coaching abilities at rival Central Michigan. Western coach Bill Cubitt has a history of upsetting heavily favored BCS opponents. But to do that today, he'll need a big game from his quarterback, Alex Carter, who has a large contingent of family and friends who have come all the way from Kansas to see him perform on the biggest stage of his career. The season passes the halfway point for Dane Christ and the Irish as they seek their third straight victory. set to take on Western Michigan and here come the Irish. trying to generate some momentum looking for their third straight victory today Dane Christ saying that they will not take Western Michigan lightly even though the Irish are big favorites this afternoon. Christ of course has made steady progress as the quarterback of the Irish and uh, his coach Brian Kelly saying he can see every week the progress he makes in learning this spread offense and picking up the nuances of it. And he was telling us yesterday that now he does things automatically rather than having to think about them and picking up some uh, new aspects to his game seemingly every week. Hello everyone welcome to Notre Dame Stadium Tom Hammond Mike Mayock ready for the Broncos of Western Michigan against Notre Dame. This marks the beginning of the second half of the season. The Irish finished that grueling first six games with a three in three record. But having made that progress we mentioned it looks like the outlook is bright for the second half of the season and the progress they have made typified by Dane Chris. It really is and you know I really thought last week the first half against Pitt was by far the best football I've seen Dane play but he's yet to put together what I would call four consecutive quarters of clean football. How do you define clean? Well, number one, no turnovers. Number two, he's got to be consistent in his reads. And lastly, in the spread offense, I'd like to see 65% completions. Well, running back Armando Allen bothered with a hip injury, so that might mean a lot of carries today for Sierra Wood. What an explosive young man. He has to put together what I would say is a game where he doesn't get overextended. What do I mean by that? Well, don't get your quarterback blown up. Do the little things. Catch the football. Not everything's a home run, but make no mistake about it. His continued development is critical for the second half of this season. And for the Broncos, their upset hopes, it would be a big upset, rely on their quarterback, Alex Carter. Bob Diaco, the defensive coordinator of Notre Dame, talking about Carter, says uh, he really is fun to watch and plays football the way it should be played as the Broncos get set to make their first ever appearance here at Notre Dame Stadium. But Carter is the key to success. <laughs> yeah, he is. And I was surprised this kid wasn't more highly recruited. Good size. He has an above average arm. They'll get him heavily involved in the run game. And if Western Michigan expects to compete today, Tom, this kid's going to have to make some big plays to keep him in it. Well, the Irish today will be playing without their All-American tight end, Kyle Rudolph. And for the complete story on that, let's go down to Alex Flanagan. Thank you, Tom. Well, Kyle Rudolph underwent season-ending hamstring surgery yesterday. Doctors had to reattach a tendon to the bone that connects the hamstring. 
Now, Rudolph said that the surgery went very, very well. He now begins his rehab process, which will be about four to six months. Meanwhile, his good friend Dane Christ will have to find a new favorite target. Sophomore Tyler Eifert will get the start today. And Tom, as Brian Kelly likes to say, he has an opportunity to be the next man in. One quick note, Armando Allen is struggling with a hamstring. He just told me that he will start today and try to fight through, fight through that actually a hip flexor, Tom. All right, Alex, and uh, there's a look at number 80, Tyler Eifert, uh, next in line for what has become a tight end you here at Notre Dame. And the good friends, Brian Kelly and Bill Cubitt, the Western Michigan coach. Kelly facing uh, the Broncos at Central Michigan and at Cincinnati. This is actually the third meeting between the two teams. The first two, though, were in 1919 and 1920, and uh, Western Michigan has yet to score a point on the Irish. And those meetings, of course, were before this stadium was built and in fact uh, since the Mid-American Conference was formed in 1947 this is the first time that a Mac team has played against Notre Dame. Western Michigan wins the toss they defer to the second half and so it will be a Potter the kickoff man for the Broncos and Notre Dame will have the first possession of this game. Interesting that they deferred to the second half tells me Bill Cubitt, the head coach of Western Michigan, feels pretty confident that that first possession of the second half will be critical to the overall ball game. Bennett Jackson awaits the kickoff of John Potter to get this game underway. Notre Dame looking for its third straight victory. The Broncos come in with a record of two and three, coming off a victory at Ball State a week ago, which they won 45 16 over the Cardinals. So Potter has it teed up and ready to go, and then the ball promptly blows off the tee. <laughs> so he'll have to reset it. You know, Notre Dame Stadium sold out for the 217th consecutive game. And it's a beautiful day, Tom, oh, as you perfect. were saying. Oh, it's just a beautiful football day, but I was on the field before the game. It's a tricky wind out there. It's a little bit more than you would expect, and they're going to have to deal with that in the kick game. Well, we just saw that uh, as evidenced by the ball blowing off the tee before Potter could get the game underway. Here we go. Potter sends it down toward Jackson, who takes it uh, halfway deep in the end zone. It'll be a touchback. Good kickoff by Potter. And the Irish now will begin right on their 20 yard line. So our Adidas starting lineups for the Notre Dame offensive unit. And like last week, Taylor Dever is out. So Martin moves in there. And Romine takes over on the left side of the offensive line. And Armando Allen, despite the hip injury, will get in the starting lineup. But look for Sierra Wood to get a lot of carries. And Tyler Eifert moves into Kyle Rudolph's old spot. And as we begin, we expect both Wood and Allen to see a lot of playing time. Allen trying to tough it out, but Sierra will be here on the first play from scrimmage. Gets the fake from Chris, who goes deep on the first play of the game. It's caught by Michael Floyd. And Floyd shakes the tackler and is racing down the field to the 10 and the touchdown. First play from scrimmage. And Chris strikes to Michael Floyd. It's an 80 yard touchdown pass. Dane Chris had a 95 yarder earlier this season to Kyle Rudolph. This one goes for 80 yards to Michael Floyd. Wow. Play action, Billy Cupid, the worst thing that could happen for him, and they worked against Lewis Toller, the best football player, I think, on Western Michigan's defense. David Ruffer for the point after. And Ruffer puts it through. So Dane Crisp throwing the touchdown pass is 12th of the season. And it's play action working against Lewis Toller. Toller bit on the double fake, and that was just a real good job by Floyd adjusting to the football. Toller with an awful lot of air between him and the free safety. And don't forget, look at Dane Crisp. That's a good way to start, isn't it, Tom? <laughs> one for one for 80. And the Irish celebration. First play from scrimmage. Bang! They go 80 yards for the touchdown. Dean led Floyd away from Toller. 
free safety was occupied, and that big body of Michael Floyd caught the football as a little bit of a hamstring, but still you can see how explosive that kid is. Michael Floyd uh, battling a little injury himself. Looked good on that one, though, as he shook Toler's would-be tackle and romped 20 or 80 yards for the 20th touchdown reception of his career. So it'll be a rougher kicking off. We saw Nick Tosh kick off uh, Tausch kick off last week, but David Ruffer has it ready to go with Wallace and Fields deep for Western Michigan, and Ruffer has it blow off the tee. <laughs> Maybe that's a good omen for the Broncos. It blew off the tee for Potter to open the game, and the Irish, after they got possession at the 20, had the touchdown strike. Winds gusting to 25 miles an hour here at the stadium. Ruffer's boot is short against the wind. Fumbled. Brian Fields fumbled it, able to fall on it. And the Broncos narrowly avert disaster on their first possession. There's what Carter did last week in the win over Ball State 17 for 29 265 yards and a touchdown and you'll see that Western Michigan loves to throw the ball in fact Bill Cuba telling us on a Thursday that against Notre Dame they'll have to employ the short pass as a run wait a minute we've got a different formation here right out of the get go Tom they call this their polecat formation and so a little trickery for the Broncos first possession pass deflected they had a man wide open but Darius Fleming able to deflect the first throw from Alex Carter. So the polecat formation does not work for the Broncos on their first play from scrimmage. And remember the two end men on the line of scrimmage are eligible. So the person who centered the ball had an eligible number and went out for a pass. Now conventional formation and a handoff to Drake. Hit behind wow. the line of death. By Manti Teo. <laughs> Here so far. They've got man to man all the way across the board. Bakes for a pass. Third and 11. Chris hit as he delivered. And the catch made by Floyd. And it looks like it will be just enough for the first down. 12 yard gain. Chris took a uh, shot just as he delivered the ball, but it goes for a first to Floyd. And yeah, they move the pocket here, and this is Floyd working on Taller, gets him up the field, and again, for a big guy at 6'3", 227, I think what Michael Floyd has gotten better at this year is his ability to get in and out of breaks, and I think Brian Kelly's demanding that of him. Irish convert a third down. Armando Allen. Bounced off would-be tacklers in the backfield and then dropped for a loss in the play back to the 35-yard line. Chris Prom, the sophomore from Sockville, Wisconsin, makes the hit for the Broncos. Yeah, they're trying to bring Eifert, the H back, and the backside guard. So they're going to bring here and here across the formation pulling. But watch Chris Prom reads it correctly, comes off the pile, scrapes over the top, and makes a great play. Dane Christ. Short game to the 40-yard line as Tyler Eifert makes his first catch of the game. The sophomore tight end from Fort Wayne, Indiana. That's only his second catch of the season, but expected to get a lot more now that Rudolph is sidelined. Barry and Zajac combine on the hit. Third down and seven. See if the Irish can convert another third as the blitz comes. Chris hit and dropped for the sack. Dex Jones and Chris Prom met at Dane Christ and took him down for the sack and a loss on the play of eight yards. Yeah, and they brought third level pressure. Mario Armstrong here will get picked up, but off the edge, Dex Jones, 42, is untouched out here. And then from the inside out, it's Prom double teaming them. And I'll tell you what, Tom, after an 80 yard touchdown pass, and coming out and getting stopped in the first three, I give their defense a ton of credit to come back and stop Notre Dame like that. Ben Turk in punt formation, averaging 38 yards a kick, kicking it toward Jordan White. He calls for a fair catch. Oh. And his depth, that'll be fair catch interference. No flag. no flag, though. His own people. I guess he was run into by his own man on the play, although it looked like a knot of players from each team there, so no flag. John McDade heads the Big East officiating crew today. And Bill Cubitt saying, how come no laundry on the field? But still, good field position for the Broncos. 
you know, I've been looking at the numbers, and I think our campus is spending too much money on printing. I'd like to put you in charge of cutting costs. Calm down. I know that it is not your job. What I'm saying, excuse me? All right, fine. No, you don't have to do it, OK? Notre Dame knows it's better for Xerox to control their printing costs so they can focus on winning on and off the field. Are you sure I can't? OK, no, I get it. With Xerox, you're ready for real business. Marcy forgot to arm her home security system, but with new ADT Pulse solutions, she can do it right from her phone. When Gary travels, he can program his home to help save energy, which can help save money. And with secure video through ADT Pulse, Lisa can know when her daughter is home from school. Introducing ADT Pulse. Now manage and help protect your home from your phone or computer, plus save $250. Call or visit ADTPulse.com for a free in-home review. It's a universal gesture. A way of telling the world you did it without saying a word. Introducing the Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG. The best or nothing, that is what drives us. Irish fans, check out a live simulcast of today's action on NBCSports.com. Or if you're on the go, watch from your iPhone and iPad. Download the ND Central app, available on iTunes. Well, this uh, should have been fair catch interference against Notre Dame. Yeah, Bennett Jackson, number 86, is the first guy to make contact, clearly right there. Now, I was a punt returner in college, and I'll tell you right now, if you get that tight and make any kind of contact, that should be called. Wasn't called, but still good. Field position for Alex Carter, who comes with a two tight end formation, Blake Hammond and Dallas Walker. Aaron Winchester is the running back. Here's the option in the pitch to Winchester. Oops. Right to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a loss of a yard on the play. Juan Nunez has got to make the block on the edge. Great job by Blant. He ran right through the stalk block of Nunez. Second and 11 for the Broncos. Going with a no huddle. Carter from the shotgun. On the slant, ball is flagged down for Nunez. Nunez somehow able to hang on after the hit, and the flag came flying. Going to get Gary Passing Gray here. Number four in the defense. Ball be placed at the spot of the foul with an automatic first step. So. Yeah, it's very difficult as a corner not to get interference on a quick slant because you're taught to fight the inside move. You can see Gray right here on Nunez. And as soon as he makes that quick declaration, when you come around the back, typically your backside hand is on the body, and that's what they get you for. Nunez was unable to uh, hang on to the ball, but the interference call. Here's Carter, got one. Got one man in the backfield, but can't get back to the line of scrimmage. That'll be a sack for Ethan Johnson. He is third of the season as we look at our Adidas starting lineups for Western Michigan's offense. A constant uh, shuffling up front for the Broncos. Swanson and Jaeger join the starters today. And Jordan White, the leading receiver on a team that loves to throw the football. Ethan Johnson did a phenomenal job on naked bootleg keeping contained. Found the open man. It's Ansel Ponder who takes the ball for a Broncos first down. Ponder's first catch of the game goes for 14 yards. That's his 18th reception of the season. Ponder's the inside receiver who's going to work over here. He initially wanted the outside receiver and didn't have him. He waited, waited, and when Manti Teo reacted outside, he hit Ponder and give Ponder credit for getting vertical and a first down. Here's Carter. Given time. Oh, who threads the needle for a first down. Nice pass by Alex Carter. It goes for 13 yards to Arnheim. And that was an impressive throw from the sophomore from Shawnee, Kansas. It's the same exact route Arnheim ran on the last play. 
Teo doesn't expand all the way. They take advantage of it and give Carter credit, making the correct read both times, keying off Manti Teo and completing two passes. First down handoff to Aaron Winchester. Inside the 30-yard line. Pushing and shoving as the whistles stop the action. And Winchester lost his headgear. He'll head to the sideline. Tevin Drake comes in to replace him as we take a look at our first down line brought to you by Xerox. That's the line to gain for the Broncos, eight yards away from the line of scrimmage. Carter again, wide open. The receiver is Nunez. Driven back by Robert Blanton, but not until he made a nice gain and initially wide open, and Carter found him. Yeah, the tight end ran a clearing route, and then you go a little whip route back underneath. Good protection. 29 is the freshman right there with the protection. They get the whip route underneath. Brings them on schedule with a third and three situation. Third down and three. And Bob Diaco, the defensive coordinator of Notre Dame, saying they're just as likely to throw the ball here as run it in this situation. Yeah, it's a throw or it's option typically. Carter got rid of it. Winchester made a nice move and has the first down for the Broncos. Five yard gain. Darren Walls stopping. Winchester, but he made a nice move to get the first down for the Bronx. And Tom, I said at the top, I thought this kid should be, should have been more highly recruited. This is all about him. He doesn't have slant. Look at the athletic ability to keep a play alive. He gets the football out to Winchester, who ends up making a first down. Carter and his coach is telling us uh, he loves contact. <laughs> and uh, will stick his head right in there. Started the game with a bloody nose once, shook it off. No problem. Here's the option. And the pitch. Drake. Oh, wow. Dent. Wow. Zeke Mata from the safety spot after a gain of a yard or two. And I think that's the position right there they need to continually get better play from on defense. That that field safety. Zeke Mata, Jamar Slaughter, that time in the open field. I thought that Brian Smith lost contain and Blanton, excuse me, Mata came up and with a perfect form tackle held it to two yards. Second and eight. Under center, two tight ends. Carter, short drop, pops one way, goes for the touchdown, but overthrows Nunez by a large margin. Gary Gray was defending him. Looking for the deep shot. Yeah, I thought I thought that he had the pump where he went. This is where you predetermine. Right here, I think he beats him off the line of scrimmage. Now, the safety was trying to get over the top, but I think he had walls beat, and that was their best receiver, Jordan White. Sometimes, Tom, you get so preoccupied with your pre-snap reads, you predetermine where you're going to throw the football, and I thought he had it down at the bottom. So after two tight ends on second down, they go with four wides here on third down and long. Carter's pass is complete to the 11-yard line, and just short of the first down is Ansel Ponder. Excuse me, it's not Ponder, it's Nunez with the uh, reception a yard short of first down territory. So. Decision time here. Fourth <laughs> down in a yard or two. Not they're, really. Here it comes again. They're going to go for it in their polecat formation. Now this time that's a center there. He has an ineligible number on. And straight ahead is Carter for an apparent first down. Yes, it will be first down Western Michigan. This is you can see the Notre Dame people. Can, I mean, this is something that you don't just ordinarily game plan for. And I give Notre Dame credit so far. They came out the first snap of the game. It was an incomplete pass. And here's a quarterback sneak. They're trying to go very quickly here. High formation this time. Drake and Fields, the running backs. Nunez in motion is Carter. Hands it off to Drake. 
Inside the five yard line is Tevin Drake playing in only his second game of the season. The freshman from Brookville, Florida. Really interesting. Look what you've got Ian Williams. You've got Johnson down there. You've got to deploy your defensive forces and spread they by alignment Tom. They spread you out and then run quarterback sneak. I give Bill Cubitt a ton of credit for being creative early in the game and the kids for hanging in there after the early shot by Notre Dame. Cubitt to also serves as offensive coordinator. Second and goal. Quarterback draw. Carter, the tough guy. It'll be marked just short of the end zone. So down at the one yard line, Alex Carter, who shows his disgust at not quite making it into the end zone. It's going to be third and goal from the one yard line. I really like this kid. Quarterback draw, planned run. The knees down clearly. Good call by the referee crew, and here they go. Here they go. On quarterback sneak. And again, stopped a yard just inside the one yard line, short of the end zone. It's Mark Short to bring up a fourth down. <laughs> fourth and goal inside the one yard line. And if history is any indication, Bill Cubitt's not even going to think about it. He's already gone for a fourth down and converted it with the lonesome polecat. If you put their Michigan State tape on, they were down 7 nothing in the first half, went for it on fourth down, and scored a touchdown to tie the ball game at 7-7. Seven to seven. Big underdogs, what does he have to lose? Carter keeps. Touchdown. Alex Carter with his fifth. Rushing touchdown of the season as they go to the power game and pound it across the goal line to make it a one point game. So the Broncos shocked after the first play of from scrimmage by Notre Dame come back for the touchdown a twisting run by Alex Carter and now the extra point attempt from John Potter. Potter has hit all 19 of his point after attempts. And Tom, that drive is all about Alex Carter. Extending the drive, making the touchdown, the fourth down conversion, that was beautiful. Potter ties it at seven as the Broncos led by their quarterback Alex Carter. 15 plays, 59 yards, two fourth down conversion. Christ, under pressure, setting up a screen pass. Caught by Sierra Wood. Wood able to get away from the initial charge by the Broncos and then Jamel Barry brings him down just short of the first down. It'll be third down for the Irish. And remember uh, last week against Pittsburgh the Irish uh, really got it going when they started upping the tempo. And that was one thing that bothered the defensive coaches of Western Michigan Dave Cohen the defensive coordinator and others. They go with two tight ends here Eifert and Ragone. Wood hit behind the line and there's a flag down as he stops short of first down yardage. Check the penalty from the Big East crew. Yeah I think we're going to get a hold on Braxton Cave. See where they spot the football now. Illegal formation on the offense. Five men on the offensive backfield. Five yard penalty. Third down. So step off the five yards for illegal formation and replay third down. Third down and six from the 29 yard line of the Irish in a 7 7 first quarter. Two minutes left in the first. Empty set here with the empty backfield and five wide receivers. Chris, side on toss, is caught for the first down. Tyler Eifert and fumble the football. Scramble for it. They'll unpeel those players and who's at the bottom of the stack. Notre Dame football. 
Good job, I thought, by Dane Crist, waiting for Eifert against a zone defense. Watch the defenders expand. He's going to come back underneath Dex Jones right there. The hole in the coverage. Good catch. Tyler Eifert gets up the field. you got to hold the football, though. First down, Irish, after Notre Dame recovers the fumble. You'll notice Ragone is in right after Eifert fumbled it. Play action fake, and the catch is made by Floyd. Michael Floyd then driven back. There's a late flag right at midfield. Jamel Berry and Paul Hazel stopping Michael Floyd. Holding number seven on the offense. Ten yard penalty, second down. Holding call on T.J. Jones. Yeah, they got T.J. Jones for holding, and they, Theo Riddick just got absolutely stiffed by Jamel Burry, who ended up making the tackle. It's tough when you're trying to get the football to your 227-pound wideout, and you've got two munchkins trying to block in front of them on the bubble screen. So loss on the last play. The ball on the 36 yard line sets up a second down and 13. Chris, good protection. He threw it into traffic and it bounces right off the pads of Theo Riddick. Actually, a pretty good throw by Chris, who got it in between two or three Bronco defenders, but then Riddick could not hold on. Yeah, I think Dane wanted this route the entire time. I thought Jamel Burry. The rover did a nice job staying underneath it right there. I mean, it's a heck of a throw, but I'd like to see a little different decision there. I, I don't think that's the primary receiver based on the co underneath coverage by Burry. Third down and 13, final seconds of the first quarter. Dane Crist, three-man rush for the Broncos, and Crist with a run. Can't get away though. Hit at the 40 yard line by Barry. And the Irish will face a fourth down. After shocked by Notre Dame on that first play from scrimmage. In fact, in the first quarter, Notre Dame outgained Western Michigan 111 to 61, but take away the 80 yards of that big pass play, and the Broncos had the edge 61 to 31. First down pass picked off. Intercepted by Darius Fleming. And that's what they're looking for from Fleming. The ability to both rush the quarterback and in that 3-4 defense also drop off and read the quarterback's eyes. Here he is right here. Are you coming or dropping? 45 degree angle, looks up the route. That is picture perfect. Flips the head, sees the football and intercepts it. Carter's got to know better. You have to see the underneath coverage. But, Tom, that's textbook by Darius Fleming. And Fleming able to tiptoe, getting a foot in before going out of bounds. Carter picked off for Alex Carter. His eighth interception, I believe, this season, Tom. And, and that's the one that, you know, when you're in a tight ball game against a big team like Notre Dame, that's the mistake you can't afford. So 10 touchdown passes. And the interception, the eighth, as Mike said. Maybe that'll get Notre Dame back on track. Here's a reverse. Goodman going to throw a pass. Goodman for the end zone for Floyd. It makes the catch and has the Irish touchdown. <laughs> John Goodman, the high school quarterback, on the reverse pass for the touchdown, 32 yards. He was Tyler Eifert's high school quarterback. Notre Dame saying, okay, you're going to go poke out on us. We're going to go reverse pass on you. Goodman, an all-state quarterback at Bishop Winger High School in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And now David Ruffer for the extra point. Right down the middle. So Darius Fleming with an interception for a big play on the Irish defense. And now Dane Chris congratulates the offensive unit. A John Goodman touchdown pass to Michael Floyd. 21st TD pass reception for Floyd. Four wide receivers. Shotgun formation for Carter. Looks one way, the other. Across the middle, catch made. Jordan White. And fumble recovered by Notre Dame. 
the second straight takeaway by the Irish as White made what would have been a first down catch. Ball comes loose and Notre Dame recovers. Jordan White is a fifth year senior and you can't make this kind of mistake in a game where you're a clear underdog. Comes off the line, knows its zone, makes the catch. Now at this point, you've got to tuck that football away the entire way. You could see the ball down by his knee, recovered clearly by Ethan Johnson. Well, they're going to review to see if his knee was down before the fumble. Don George and John Smith of the Big East are our replay officials today. We'll see whether that left knee of his, I believe, is down. The ball's in his left arm. So the ball in the left arm makes the cut right here. That left knee hits right there, and now there's the football. After further right review, there. the play stands is called. First down, Notre Dame. So quick decision by the replay officials, and the call stands. Turnover, number two by the Broncos offense. An interception by Darius Fleming was turned into an Irish touchdown, and now the fumble recovery by Ethan Johnson. You cannot afford to turn the football over when you're a big underdog like this. Chris, handoff, Armando Allen. Pumped by the jersey and spinning away short of midfield on a yard as Bowles gets credit for the uh, stop for the Broncos. I thought those new techno jerseys weren't you weren't <laughs> supposed to be able to grab them. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> that time they had Allen by the jersey. Chris Brom had him by the jersey. They're supposed to stretch though. These are the new tech fit compression jerseys from Adidas. And a few teams debuting those jerseys this week around the country. Notre Dame being one of them. Chris play action fake pumps one way and goes on a short hop incomplete intended for Riddick. Chris pass was intended for Theo Riddick. That's the kind of pass where your footwork and technique has to be flawless because your entire body's face toward the sideline as you're faking the bubble screen, and then you've got to rotate your hips and your feet for the seam route. Third down and seven for the Irish. to the top of the formation. Chris looking that way, looks the other way, trying to set up the screen off the hands of Allen and incomplete. So fourth down, Chris took a shot. Pressure on the quarterback. And Notre Dame after the turnover, unable to convert, and the puck team comes out. Heavy pressure. The three man, this is an odd defensive front. Look at Armstrong, defensive back, Petway. Both safeties coming on that. No alley to get the football to Armando Allen. Jordan White, who fumbled after a pass reception the last play, off his pads, able to recover it, but down at the one-yard line. Another mistake by Jordan White, normally the steady man for the Broncos. And White, after fumbling on a reception that would have been a first down the last time he touched it, fumbles this punt reception clearly loses the football it's on about the seven yard line the rule is you don't touch it if it's inside the 10 and look at who's there first as always the 172 pound true freshman wide receiver Bennett Jackson if you're looking for a special teams player at Notre Dame you better block this kid love watching him play ball big trouble now for the Broncos offense Formation Brian Fields pounds out a yard or so. <laughs> That's a double isolation, if for lack of a better term. Three backs behind the quarterback, and you're just trying to dig it out of there, burrow it out of there any way you can. Same thing. Is it incomplete? Tended for Dex Jones. 
Yeah, he had Dex Jones wide open, but this is what the end zone does to you. When he comes off this slip, there it is. Dex Jones slides to the flat. He hurries so much. He's concerned about being in the end zone. He almost goes down. Take your time to get rid of the football. From the two-yard line, Western Michigan facing a third down and long. Carter's only a sophomore. I think he's done a great job as a starter. This is just a learning experience for him. Hand off Winchester. He'll give his putter armor a bit more room as he comes to the five yard line. So armor will have to punt from his own end zone to John Goodman. Two deep safeties this time because he's such a good directional punter, Tom. Armor from his own end zone. Harrison Smith joins John Goodman. Armor's punt. Goodman calls for a fair catch. Makes it at the 36-yard line. Excellent field position. The punt only 31 yards by Armour from his own end zone. And the Irish have a first down already in uh, Bronco territory. They'll mark it at the 36-yard line of Western Michigan. And I think this is a critical series for both teams here, Tom. You know, it's early in the game, but Notre Dame's up 14 to 7. Western Michigan has turned the football over twice, had a bad mistake on a punt return that forced a punt out of their own end zone. If Notre Dame can take the football in at this point and make it 21 to 7, you go, uh-oh, look out. Dane Crist, well, in between two would-be receivers. I guess it was Riddick for whom it was intended. Yeah, I think it was deflected by Trevante Bowles because if it wasn't, I think you're going to end up with a pass interference call here. Look at Bowles, 55 right there, deflects the football, and because of that, all bets are off for pass interference. So the Irish was second down, their third straight possession, beginning in Broncos territory. Play action fake, Chris. Wide open is Eifert. Lowers his shoulder. And bumped out of bounds by Lewis Toller, but Tyler Eifert doing his best Kyle Rudolph imitation. Yeah, that's the spread version of, of bootleg. Backside guard Trevor Robinson pulls out. They complete it. Bang. That's an easy one. Nice job by the backside guard and the quarterback. First down from the 23. Screen to Floyd. Michael Floyd already has two touchdown passes. Twisted to the turf at the 20-yard line. Myra Armstrong gets credit for the stop. Senior from Warner Robins, Georgia. Huge so, day for Michael Floyd, huh, Tom? Yeah, he's already caught two touchdown passes, 20th and 21st of his Notre Dame career. There's where the Irish are trying to gain the Xerox first down line. Second and seven. Chris, all kinds of protection, crossing route to Riddick. Riddick shakes one man, gets by another inside the 10-yard line. First and goal, Notre Dame, Doug Wiggins, after a gain of 12, makes the tackle for Western Michigan. Now, I thought Dane was late on his read here. He had Michael Floyd up top, one-on-one. -on -one. He chose to bring it down underneath the Riddick, and it's, it's the explosive quickness of the former running back that turned that into a 12-yard gain. First down, Irish. First and goal from the nine. Chris, touchdown. Dane Chris with the fourth rushing touchdown of the season. Ryan Kelly sending his quarterback to the corner of the end zone as he speaks with a Michael Floyd who already has the other two Irish touchdowns. Notre Dame getting the ball deep in Bronco territory. They take advantage of it for the touchdown and David Ruffer will attempt the point after. And that is 
Blocked. Blocked. Good play by the special teams of the Broncos as Drew Novak pounding his chest and I did it. But Dane Crest able to sprint into the corner of the end zone. It's 20 to 7 Irish. Hey, did you ever finish last month's invoices? Sadly, no. Oh. But I did pick up your dry cleaning and had your shoes shine. Well, I made you a reservation at the sushi place around the corner. Well, in that case, I better get back to these invoices. Which I'll do right after making your favorite pancakes. You know what? I'm going to tidy up your side of the office. I can't hear you because I'm also making you a smoothie. Marriott Hotels and Resorts knows it's better for Xerox to automate their global invoice process so they can focus on serving their customers. With Xerox, you're ready for real business. It's a universal gesture. A way of telling the world you did it without saying a word. Introducing the Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG. The best or nothing, that is what drives us. Even in the most uncertain times, there are some things we know for sure. There will still be weddings, still be babies, and still be bright futures. That's why New York Life has been helping families plan for the expected and unexpected for 165 years. Backed by the highest ratings for financial strength, we're safe and secure, so you can be too. Give your family the gift of a secure financial future. New York Life, the company you keep. Sunday night is football night. Peyton Manning and the Colts head to Washington to take on Donovan McNabb and the Redskins. Live coverage begins with football night in America, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, only on NBC. Well, David Ruffer had his extra point blocked. So the first kick he has ever missed as the Notre Dame place kicker. Point after missed. His field goal string, of course, is still intact. He's not missed a field goal. His record 16 straight is intact, but that's the first miss. The block is either point after or field goal as he kicks it off. Brian Fields deep in his end zone, takes a knee, and the touchback as we go down to Alex. Thank you, Tom. A special visitor today, Commissioner Roger Goodell of the NFL. Roger, your niece, a freshman here, and I understand you've gotten the grand tour today. Tell me about it. We did. We had a special tour. We went around with the students and just uh, got a chance to see the campus. I've never been here before, and it's if you're interested in football, it's a great place to be in the fall. The pink hat uh, in recognition of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. You went to the grotto today and lit, lit a candle for your mother. Tell me about that. I did, and all the survivors. You know, it's, uh, it's something where we think we can really make a difference Alex in the NFL and you see it all month long on our players and our coaches and uh, hopefully we're going to make sure people understand the importance of screening. Roger the NCAA in the news a lot this week with their issues dealing with agents. What do you think the NFL can do to help. Well I think we're going to have to work with the NCAA. I think we have to work with the coaches. We're going to have to work with the NFLPA. And we're all going to have to work together to try to find a solution that works for the kids. We, you know, we often forget this is about the kids, the young men that, that really have a bright future ahead of them, and we need to give them the support and the guidance to make sure they make good decisions. You have a lot going on, though, in your world to handle. Is this your responsibility? Well, I think it's part of our responsibility. I think anything that affects the game of football, whether you're on the NFL level, the college level, or down to youth football, we all have a responsibility to do what's right for the young men in the game. All right, let's talk about the lockout, the potential of a lockout. A Patriots owner, Robert Kraft, coming out saying that he believes that you guys can get a deal done with the players' union. What do you think? I do, and we're working hard to make sure that happens. I think sooner rather than later. It's in the best interest of everybody involved with the NFL, uh, the players, uh, and uh, certainly the club. So, and most importantly, we got to remember the fans. We want to play football. Final word. I'm heading to Minnesota tomorrow. I can't let you go without asking you about the Brett Favre drama. What's your take? What's the league doing? Well, we're all trying to get the facts of what happened. We'll be meeting with Brett next week, uh, someone from our staff, to make sure we understand all of the facts. And then as soon as we can, we'll make a decision. Roger Goodell, thank you so much for joining Thanks, us. Have fun. Good to see you, Alex. It's been a lot of fun. All right, Alex. Meanwhile, the Broncos, two straight completions to Jordan White. Personal foul on Kerry Neal of Notre Dame. And 
Two straight first downs now for the Broncos as Aaron Winchester gets that carry and picks up the first before he's tackled by Harrison Smith after a gain of eight. And we saw the pole cat earlier. Now we're unbalanced on this side of the line. It's only a guard and a tackle. They're going to go heavy run front side where they've got a man advantage. E, uh, Capron Lewis Moore went up the field a little bit too far. Winchester with a big gain and another first down. So Commissioner Goodell with that breast cancer awareness month pink on his Notre Dame hat. And Alex Carter's mom Lane a breast cancer survivor. Ooh. That's made by Nunez who bounces off the hit. Makes again. As we take a look at our uh, Notre Dame defense starting lineup, our Adidas starting lineup, Ian Williams continues to play well at the nose. And Titeo, fifth leading tackler in the FBS, all of uh, major college football. Zake Mata gets the start at safety today. Jamar Slaughter, huh? full strength. Carter steps up, finds the open man, another first down. Winchester takes it to the 25-yard line. And I was talking about Lane Carter, the uh, mother of Alex Carter, being a breast cancer survivor. She sent 130 bracelets to the Broncos, as you see her in the picture there. They made the trip in from Shawnee Mission, Kansas. And uh, the bracelets say faith and courage. Some of the others say hope and strength. Diagnosed when Alex was a teenager and all the Bronco players wearing the bracelets that Alex mother sent. There's a flag Winchester. down on that carry by Winchester. And I really thought Carter was an impressive kid. Talked about his mom, her influence in his life. And I really like what he Offsides. said. Offsides, lined up in the neutral zone. Number 17 defense, five yard penalty, first down. A couple of penalties helping the Broncos on this drive. The Irish had a personal foul and now an offside. Meanwhile, Alex Carter has four straight completions. Yeah, we asked him if he was going to have friends and family at the game, and he <laughs> said, hey, Shawnee's bringing some people. 30 to 35 family and friends here enjoying a tailgate before the game started. Biggest stage of the career of Alex Carter and his friends and family here to see it. Stands tall in the pocket and delivers to Dallas Walker. Out of bounds at the nine yard line. Walker with the catch, the tight end for 11 yards. And this is a crossing route. They brought heat on the quarterback, picked it up, and the crossing route by Dallas Walker, a former high school quarterback, went to Memphis as a quarterback, transferred to Western Michigan, the throw underneath, and another first down. Broncos not intimidated at Notre Dame Stadium. Trying to get back in the game, down four or down uh, 13 points. To the five yard line is Nunez. Gang tackled as we come inside six minutes left till halftime. And I'm giving Western Michigan some credit here. A lot of teams would come into this situation, get down 20 to 7. Have two turnovers, have the bad punt return, have all that go against them and fold. I don't think Bill Cubitt's guys are doing that. Look at this drive. Convert a bunch of third down conversions. And now if you're a Western Michigan fan, you got to pop it in for seven points. Second and goal, five yard line. Alex Carter in the empty backfield. He's six for six on this drive. Irish with the blitz. For the end zone, out of the end zone, incomplete. Jordan White closest to it, defended by Harrison Smith. Carter knew the blitz was coming. He identified it for his offensive line and forced him to get rid of the football. He's going to see this come off the edge right there with Curry Neal. Little double move on Harrison Smith, who I think has been maybe their most consistent defensive football player. What a season Harrison Smith continues to have. Ninth play of the drive coming up. Third down and goal. From the five yard line. In the empty backfield. Five wide receiver. Blitz. Carter's pass. Incomplete over the head of Nunez, who was engaged on the play and not open. Yeah, and there was a disconnect there because Teo came un untouched right up the middle, and the quarterback and the wide receivers were on a complete disconnect, and Carter had to throw the ball away. Bill Cubitt telling him that now again the young man who did not start a game last season played an eight but 
attempted only seven passes, five for seven last year. So the starter this year is six start today. So a 23 yard field goal now by John Potter. And Potter nails it. He's now five of six in field goals this season. Bill Gilmont. October Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Chris rolling. Got some pressure and a block. And then has wide open Eifert. Eifert touchdown. First touchdown of his Notre Dame career, the sophomore from Fort Wayne. Wide open for the TD on fourth down. And that was a bust from the very snap. Eifert was uncovered and finally Chris found him. They come with a blitz off the edge. So Tyler Eifert moving into the spot vacated by the surgery to Kyle Rudolph out for the season has had a big day and his first Irish touchdown. Ruffer who had his last extra point blocked boots that one through and the Irish get a big play and their first fourth down conversion of the season. It's now Notre Dame seven and Western Michigan ten. I do a lot of different kinds of exercise, but basically, I'm a runner. Last year, oof, I had a bum knee that needed surgery, but it got complicated because I had an old injury. So I wanted a doctor who had done this before, and United Healthcare's database helped me find a surgeon. You know, you can't have great legs if you don't have good knees. We're 78,000 people looking out for 70 million Americans. That's health in numbers. United Healthcare. It's 2010. Weren't we supposed to have time machines by now? I mean, if we at Coke Zero can give the world real Coke taste with zero calories, why can't science give us an unlimited supply of do-overs? Man, you dance like a man. I, I dance like a man? What? No, wait. <laughs> mm. We bent the rules of taste. Physicist, isn't it time to bend time? Da, 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 da. They come from all over, from north and south, from the Midwest and the Far East. They come to study, to learn the ropes, to graduate with honors, with tools that will serve them in life. Because it was here that we learned what was, what is, and what could be. Western Michigan University, grab the reins. Brian Kelly and the Irish offense continue to employ the big play against the Broncos today. And so David Ruffer will kick off after a 39 yard touchdown pass to Tyler Eifert. Ruffer's kickoff on the bounce to Fields out of the end zone. Touchback. So the Broncos from the 20. You know, just a moment ago on the touchdown to Eifert, two consecutive timeouts, and they still bust the coverage. You're going to get a blitz here, and the free, the strong safety, Mario Armstrong, coming over to man to man on Eifert. Now, watch what happens when he comes over. There's the blitz. It looks like he's lined up, but now he's coming over towards the running back. You got a bust right here. Nobody anywhere near Eifert. Chris does a good job finally getting his eyes down the field as he scrambles and converts it for a big touchdown. First down from the 20. Teo showed blitz then backed out of it and Carter able to hit Arnheim. That's six yards on first down. Carlo Calabrese made Arnheim pay for that one. Out of bounds, stops the clock at 2.15, first half. Notre Dame's got their nickel package in, Blanton and Moda Carter over the head of Arnheim. Really good man-to-man -man coverage by Zeke Mata. 
Mata had an earlier big hit today. Really gifted sophomore, six foot two, 210 pound safety that can run. Inside two minutes. And Cuban hoping to convert this third and three, or they're going to have to give the ball back to the Irish with three timeouts left. Cuban in trouble. Got rid of it. Catch many and then a first down Arnhem. Arnhem able to break the tackle of Mata and gets the first down, a gain of 17, a big conversion by the Broncos offense. Carter kept another play alive. Made a questionable throw because Mata was right on top of it, but a great catch by Arnheim and, and he converts the third down. Clock rolling, approaching 130. Catch made for a short game by Nunez. This was a, a big play in the first half because instead of having to punt the ball now on fourth down, step up, keep the play alive, throw it across your body, and that's a huge play by Arnheim against Mata, converting a third and long. Now approaching uh, midfield, Carter. See the day he's had. Deflected and incomplete. Falls at the feet of Arnheim. It was Ethan Johnson of Notre Dame that got a hand on the ball. And Notre Dame's playing a lot of cover one, which is a free safety deep and man to man under. And Ethan Johnson did a heck of a job coming off the edge and elevating. They're down in seven with a minute 29. Notre Dame still has three timeouts remaining. Flags are down. Illegal substitution. 12 minute formation on the defense. Five yard penalty. Third down. Makes it a little easier for the Broncos. Brian Kelly's not going to be happy with the penalties in the first half. Remember that helped extend the field goal drive for Western Michigan. A couple of bad penalties and then again makes it a lot easier. Third and two is now a choice down. Man coverage again. Carter's pass too high. And a flag down. Jordan White was the intended receiver. It's going to be a hold against Notre Dame. Wow. Just talked about penalties, didn't we? Again. Oh. An Number two defense gets an eligible receiver. A Ten yard penalty with an automatic first down. Darren Walls guilty of the hold. Trying to get the ball to Jordan White, who's their talented inside slot receiver right here. That's Blanton on him right there. I think the call was on Blanton as opposed to what they said, which was number two, Darren Walls. So the ball now at the Irish 38. First down for Western Michigan. They have one timeout remaining in a minute 24 at halftime. Notre Dame again on the blitz. Broncos pick it up, giving Carter time, scrambling. Nice run by Alex Carter. Blasted out of bounds inside the Irish 20. That's a gain of 20 yards on the scramble by Alex Carter. Dan Fox bumped him out of bounds. You know, the problem with man coverage, and, and Notre Dame's challenging these guys with man coverage, is when the quarterback breaks contain and gets down the field, everybody's manned up and running. Now, right now, you've got no chance because everybody's covering their man down the field. The quarterback's wide open and unaccounted for. Carter's pass. Fumbled by White, then he secures it, and it'll be stopped just short of the first down, a gain of nine. I thought Carter might have an issue here, threw it a little bit behind. Teo undercut the receiver, White, but great concentration by White, catching the football, picking up eight. Inside the final minute, Broncos threatening. They have one timeout. From the nine of Notre Dame, handoff, and it's to Winchester. He's inside the Notre Dame five. Wow, with only one timeout left because they were forced to burn too earlier, they run the zone read play. 
Time ticking away, approaching 30 seconds. First and goal, Broncos. Four yard line of the Irish. Carter handing it off, and we'll have to use that final timeout as Winchester carries. I question that. You know, I mean, you've got one timeout remaining, and you got to get a touchdown, not a field goal. And when you run the ball by definition, you're going to have to call a timeout. And now they're not going to have a chance to run a field goal unit on or any of that. It'll be second and goal from the three yard line with 19 seconds on the clock. You know, Tom, I'm sorry, go ahead, Tom. Broncos taking advantage of uh, Irish penalties in this first half. Uh, Western Michigan has not committed a miscue while the Irish six for 45 yards. And, and the two timeouts that Bill Cubitt was forced to take earlier this half has come back to haunt them a little bit. They just burnt their third and final timeout. There's 19 seconds. So if you look at this and you say, okay, what do we have left here? Can we run our field goal unit on the field if we don't convert here? Or are we calling two plays in the huddle right now so we go bang, bang? Nine play drive. So far it's covered 77 yards. Second and goal from the three. Two by two. Typically what you see up here is some kind of little pick action. And they're working a three by two down here with Notre Dame's defensive backs. Quarterback draw. Carter untouched for the score. How about Bill Cubitt? Last thing you expected was a run of any kind. <laughs> and that's what. <laughs> and it really was Anthony Parker on Darius Fleming that makes the key blocks. And I give Cubitt a ton of credit because if it doesn't score, the odds are you're going to have to sprint back to the line of scrimmage and try and spike it to get that extra play. Second touchdown run today by Carter in the sixth of the season as Potter boots the extra point through the uprights. What a impressive drive by the Broncos just before halftime. 15 seconds left in the first half. And the key touch. Three and out for the Broncos and a 20 yard punt. And now Notre Dame in great field position. Sierra Wood inside the 40 yard line of the Broncos. I'm guessing, Tom, it wasn't real pleasant in the Notre Dame locker room at halftime. And I, I, I like what the way Brian Kelly is with Alex Flanagan. I mean, he's, he was right on point and not afraid to say, we didn't come prepared to play today. I thought he was going to light into Scooter there. On the <laughs> you know? Scooter's taller than him. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you put up a fight. Here's Sierra Wood. Wood! Right around the corner. Down the sideline for the touchdown. There it is. 39 yards, the first career touchdown for sophomore Sierra Wood. Michael Floyd continues to impress me in his blocking game. Yeah, he's got a couple touchdowns, but he just gets enough of a piece right there of Mario Armstrong. He doesn't got to kill him. You got to get him off his intended route so Sierra Wood can get the edge. Touchdown. Point after by David Ruffer. It's good. Alex Carter got away. Now slips. Wow. Tough running by Alex Carter to get back to the 15 yard line, but it'll be fourth down as Carlo Calabrese chased down the elusive. You know, Western Michigan quarterback. This Carter kid, Tom, if I'm playing pickup basketball, I want him on my team. He's just a winner. Here he is standing in the end zone, twirling around, tucks it away. Look at him. He's not going down. He's looking for a first down, and, and it, regardless of what the final score is, I want this kid on my team. He's a competitor, he's a tough kid, and he's a winner. Ben Armour is the putter. Low. Punt, Goodman, fair catch, muffed it, but then fell on it. About the 47-yard line of the Irish, where they'll take over. 38-yard punt. And Notre Dame has the ball up 34-17 on the Broncos of WMU. Some guys think it's cool not to use one. I like having fun, but I always use one. We used one just last night. 
It was awesome. Knowing you're safe makes it even more pleasurable. Hey, the guys on my team will share the same one for like a month at a time. If you care about me, you're gonna use one. Wanna go home with me tonight? <laughs> I'm the designated driver. Thank you, designated drivers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Irish get the football leading 34-17 and time now to look at the Valvoline guaranteed play. First snap of the game for Notre Dame. Play action against Porter's coverage. Nice job looking off the safety coming back or Michael Floyd working one on one with Lewis Taller makes a miss and you're not going to catch him now. 80 yard touchdown and the Irish were up 7 nothing. Plays like this aren't guaranteed but Valvoline can guarantee your engine up to 300,000 miles. And off to Sierra Wood. Wood with a nice run wow. still on his way just inside the 40 yard line of the Broncos. Ripped off 14 yards on first down. Wood with a spring in his step after scoring his first career touchdown earlier and this quarter. You can really see the natural athletic ability. There's Ro uh, uh, Romine pulling and watch the cut in the hole right there. And again, there. Make you miss again up the field vertically. There. I mean, that's natural, innate running ability. You either wake up in the morning with that or you don't. Gained only three yards in the first half. He's 58 and counting here in the second half. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> Twisting and turning the flags down that might nullify it. But it was a beautiful run by Sierra Wood. He'll check the penalty. It will be a hold against Notre Dame. First down. Wow. You know, and that's what Brian Kelly was talking about with this young man. The, the natural ability is there. It's little things, pass protection, catching the football, not trying to turn every run into an 80-yard gain. And on top of that, you know, let's just be quiet, take care of business, be efficient, and it'll all work out. Big penalty. Penalties have uh, hurt the Irish today. I uh, hadn't hurt that much. They're ahead, as you see, but <laughs> it could have been uh, even more so had it not been for some penalties. And Brian Kelly signals for a timeout. With the playcock uh, perhaps ticking down too close for comfort. Timeout, Notre Dame, their first of the half. They're up 34 17. It's 2010. What happened to cloning ourselves? I mean, if we at Coke Zero can copy real Coke taste with zero calories, why can't you have more use? I have the foundation that I need. I mean, they had the bad one that made my skin break out, but I am not buying that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> we don't know how it would work. <clears throat> but we do know things can be cloned. I'm looking at you, scientists. Da, 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 da. knows it's better for Xerox to manage their global publications so they can focus on building amazing bikes. With Xerox, you're ready for real business. You can make this stuff, right? Probably. Sometimes probably doesn't cut it. That's why Valvoline guarantees your engine up to 300,000 miles. Sign up at Valvoline.com. 
The game you know and love is back. It's time to play Monopoly at McDonald's. This year, one in four wins. Peel for your chance at over $200 million in cash and prizes. Monopoly at McDonald's. The simple joy of winning. Go to Notre Dame Extra at NBCSports.com for full DVR control of today's game. Rewind, pause, and watch any of the action in slow-mo. And check out the online-only post-game show after the contest, all at NBCSports.com. 49-yard line of the Bronco. Dane Christ to Michael Floyd. Nice move to get away once. Stiff arm, flag down, 40-yard line. Typically get a face mask in this situation. Personal foul. Grabbing the face mask. Number seven on the defense. 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down. Freshman Raheem Buxton, who's had the unenviable task of trying to cover these talented Irish wide receivers. Look how skinny he is now. He's listed at 174. The coach has told us he's between 150 and 155. So if he grabs a face mask, that's probably okay. And they got some young kids on defense, four freshmen starting for them. First down, Irish. Fake the handoff. Find the wide open TJ Jones. Spinning on his feet. As he gets close to the five yard line, Buxton knocked him out. That's an 18 yard strike to TJ Jones, the freshman from Gainesville, Georgia. With uh, pass interference. Number seven on the offense, 15 wow. yard penalty. First down. So they'll call TJ for the offensive interference. And I really liked what Dane did here off the play action. Here's TJ. Let's see how they get him on the offensive interference here. Wide open out there. And there's that's certainly not offensive interference. <laughs> how can you be uh, interfering offensively with a man not within 10 yards of you? Now, obviously, it, it had to be a different number. Well, that one was a mysterious call. First and 25 inside 10 minutes in the third quarter. Wood. Sierra Wood. Three yard gain. Drew Nowak gets the Western Michigan uh, title, uh, tackle. Penalties hurting Notre Dame again. Florida State beats BC today. Michigan State rolling. Michigan State having a great season. Here's the screen pass to Wood. Sierra Wood to the 20 yard line. Mitch Zajac after 18 on the pass to Sierra Wood. Like the call there, a little peekaboo screen. Paul Hazel, the defensive end, coming up feel real hard. Sierra Wood just lets him go. Would have let him go. Peek a boo. There's the football. Now get up the field. Good block by Romine. And now make it a third as Floyd does make it. There's a flag down. Chris finds Floyd for the first if it stands. Get off the field for the snap. Penalties declined. Result of play is a first down. Western Michigan with too many men on the field. So an illegal substitution penalty declined 12 yard gain stands. It's a big conversion. That was first and forever that they ultimately converted. From the seven first and goal Irish. Chris rolls stops plants his feet. Oh. Floyd can't hold on. Wants a call and no flag. And I really like what Dane Chris did here. He wanted the receivers out of the tight bunch up top, but he finds Michael Floyd on the backside of the tight bunch. When you got a big body like that who's got leverage, give it to him. And it looks like Floyd was either tripped or started to fall down on the route. I think that was a good throw. Seventh play of the Notre Dame drive upcoming. Second and goal from the seven. Get 
They've got to be careful with their left guard and tackle not being in the backfield. Timeout, Notre Second Dame. Time. Second timeout of the half. Ryan Kelly not happy. They just beat the play clock expiring. Well, Kelly now giving it to the Zebras. <laughs> Every day, people across America count on ADT to always watch out for their businesses. As a technology leader, we're constantly reinventing the way you think about security, helping you stay connected to your company and livelihood like never before. For over 130 years, we've been there when it matters most, for what matters most, and we always will be. Find out what ADT technology can do to protect your business. ADT, always there. The before, the expectation, the B vitamins and carbs to ignite. The Dury, the collision, the power, the original Gatorade. The after, the gratitude, the protein to recover. Introducing the G series from Gatorade, Prime, Perform, Recover. Welcome to my coach. Choose your sport. My coach says I gotta get faster. My coach says I gotta gain speed. My coach says just listen to my voice. My coach says I know what you need. My coach says I'll be faster on the fast break. My coach says I'll be faster through the hole. My coach says I'll be faster to the ball. My coach says be faster. It's all on the line. The stakes don't get higher. Wow! Don't miss Sean White, Lead Action Sports Best, in Las Vegas for the chance to become Dew Cup champions. You've got to be kidding me! The Dew Tour Championships, tomorrow on NBC. 34-17, Notre Dame and Brian Kelly clearly upset with the officiating on a potential pass interference call. Michael Floyd running the crossing route in the back of the end zone. You'll see he's got inside leverage. And look at number six on his feet. That's Damon Smith clearly tackling him, not allowing him to elevate. That should have been a pass interference. Smith and Wiggins uh, disciplined by Bill Cubitt after getting into a fight with each other <laughs> on the field. Right. Again, in the Idaho game, benched them last week and said they wouldn't start this week. Sierra Wood dancing his way, but taken down for a loss on the play. Good defense. Demetrius Petway, who got the uh, free safety start with Wiggins being suspended, caught him for a loss of five. And again, when they bring heat, they've had a lot of luck. There's the safety right there coming off the edge, runs right into that zone read, and Wood tackled for a loss. <laughs> Third down and goal, but the ball back at the 12-yard line now. Chris giving good protection. Favorite target, Michael Floyd. Two-yard line, Smith holding on. It will bring up a fourth and goal for the Irish. Man coverage all the way across the board. Dane chose to go to Michael Floyd, who, why not, at 6'3", 227, a huge size advantage over DeMond Smith. And they're going to go for it. The Irish had not converted a fourth down, 0 for 3, until today. Fourth and goal from the two. <laughs> Touchdown to Floyd, number three on the afternoon. Twice from Chris and once from John Goodman. How easy was that? I say rhetorically. David Ruffer will attempt the point after. And he kicks it through. 6.34 left third quarter. Third touchdown of the game for Michael Floyd. Floyd lined up on the same side with Ragone right here. Watch what happens when Ragone crosses in front. 
Sa both people, both the safeties go with the outside route. Nobody stays inside. Michael Floyd with perhaps the easiest touchdown of his career. And the 22nd of his career, three today, as his quarterback, Chris, congratulates the big receiver from St. Paul. You now, Floyd with a few nagging injuries himself. Doesn't look like it today, does it? With three touchdowns and 22 in his career, tying him for third all time with McKnight and Mays. Wow. Good name. How about nine catches, 157 yards, and the aforementioned three touchdown receptions. Great day for Michael Floyd. Rougher to kick with the count now 41-17. Fields is deep for the Broncos. Twisting kickoff, the Fields takes about four yards deep and comes out with it. Not a good idea. Decked at the 15-yard line, Austin Collinsworth. And 29 Patrick on Coughlin. the stop as well. Patrick it was Coughlin. Coughlin that yep. made the initial hit and stood up Fields. Well, I, I got to give some credit to the Irish special teams this year and what a drastic improvement in their coverage units, both kickoff and punt. I think Mike Elston, special teams coach, has done a phenomenal job here. Forget about David Ruffer and the great story on the field goals and everything. The coverage units have been outstanding. Trying to give Austin credit. There, <laughs> Montana here. 12-yard line, uh, not much doing on that. Carry thanks to Robert Blanton of the Irish defense. Chris Collinsworth on the sideline with that hat backwards. Which watching, way do you like it, Tom? Watching his son Chris. His wife Holly's in the stands here. And he'll be heading to Washington for Sunday night football. His son has done a great job on that kickoff team all year long. A true freshman wide receiver. I like the toughness aspect when you're a freshman wide out and on the kickoff team. From uh, Fort Thomas Highlands, Fort Thomas, Kentucky, is Jordan White unable to latch on to it, incomplete, covered with a linebacker Calabrese. You know, when you combine him with Bennett Jackson, who we've talked about both as a return guy and a cover guy, you've got two freshman wide receivers on your kickoff team that are tough enough to cover kickoffs, yet talented and fast enough to be future wide receivers here. I, I think it bodes well. First down line brought to you by Xerox. Third and long. Arnheim with a catch. But the Irish defense makes sure that he does not pick up enough for the first down. I think Teo and Blanton, the first two to hit him. Good team defense and awareness of where the first down marker is. Riddick passing the Notre Dame band on his way to the locker room with a little hitch in his step. Yeah, and that, that's somebody they can't afford to lose on the heels of Kyle Rudolph. Western Michigan this half, three possessions, three and out, all three times. Armour's boot. Goodman says, stay away from it. And then doesn't take his own advice. <laughs> and a big smile from John Goodman after whatever that was.
<laughs> Close enough just isn't good enough. If your car is in an accident, make sure it's repaired with the right replacement parts. Take the scary out of life with Travelers. Call or click now for an agent or quote. Sunday night is football night. Two of the league's best quarterbacks face off. Peyton Manning and the Colts take on Donovan McNabb and the Redskins. Colts, Redskins, Sunday night, only on NBC. On a beautiful day, Notre Dame leads 41-17, and punt returner John Goodman had one of the more bizarre punt returns I've ever seen. He's telling everybody to get away from the ball. He never, ever signals for a fair catch. Big hop on the ball, and he catches the football. <laughs> <laughs> the Western Michigan guys were afraid to hit him. I mean, I give the refs credit for blowing the whistle quickly because nobody knew what they were doing. Hand off to Robert Hughes, who was shaken up earlier in the game, but is back in, obviously, and carries it to midfield. And Theo Riddick, we saw him uh, sort of limping to the sideline with a mild ankle sprain. And given that it's 41-17, uh, no sense pressing the issue. And once again, Notre Dame taking advantage of good field position. The average uh, starting point for a drive for Notre Dame today at their own 41, while for the Broncos, it's at their own 24. Four times Notre Dame has started in Western Michigan territory. Flag down as Hughes carries again. They'll have a first down if the run holds. That's some of the backup offensive linemen in the game right now. Chris Watt and Andrew Nuss. They may have gotten Nuss for a penalty there. 76 yep. on the offense. Ten yard penalty. Second down. It is uh, Nuss, the 6'5", 297 senior from Auburn, Virginia, getting playing time. And you mentioned uh, Chris Watt, 6'3", 310, a sophomore from Glen Ellen, Illinois, on the field as we check in with Scooter. Thanks, Tom. Jimmy Clausen back here at Notre Dame Stadium on a bye week this week with Carolina. So, Jimmy, first, give me your take on this offense. Totally different, right, than when you were here. Totally different, and, but, you know, it's exciting. You know, the guys are throwing the ball all over the place. Dane's having a great day today, and, you know, it's exciting just to see the guys out there, you know, performing well. Tom, you want to pick that up real quick? Well, you saw Robert Hughes upended. Big time, and uh, it'll be third down and long coming up for the Irish. The line judge ruled this a non-fumble down by contact. He's got control. The ball comes out. Good call by the side, the, the line judge. It's interesting, uh, Jimmy Clausen there. We'll go back to uh, Alex and Jimmy in a moment. And, uh, his good friend Dane Christ, his fellow Californian, and Dane telling us on more than one occasion that he really learned from watching uh, Clawson operate both on and off the field from his demeanor. T.J. Jones on the reception to midfield. Back to Alex. So, Jimmy, we know you're close friends with Dane Christ. What do you think you've been able to tell him that's helped him in this new role? You know, I think he just needs to become more, more comfortable. You know, it's hard to come in a situation where you haven't played a lot and be playing the way you want to play. You know, it took me a long time to, to get to where, where I wanted to be when I was here. And, you know, Dane's doing the same thing. But, you know, he's going in and watching a lot of film. And, you know, my, my best advice to him is to go in and watch as much film as he can because that's where the game slows down for you when you know what the defense are going are to do to you. You have to develop into a leader, right? Definitely. You know, and, and Dane, Dane's a natural leader. You know, I've known him since I was in elementary school. And, you know, he's just a natural leader, you know, a natural good guy. And, you know, I think he's leading the team really well this year. Let's talk about you in the NFL. Kind of a little bit looking like the first year you were here in terms of the offensive line. And, I mean, how do you use that experience, that first year here, to help you in what you're dealing with in the NFL right now? You know, I think the biggest thing is I've, I've been through that experience. You know, coming here and being 3-9, and nine, it, was, it was hard. You know, coming out of high school where I never lost a game. Coming here, we were couldn't win the game you know it, it was difficult but at the end of the day you know you only get stronger by you know adversity and we're going through some adversity right now in Carolina but you know we're just going to keep working hard and, and get through it looking to pick up your first win I suppose next week against San Francisco thanks Jimmy thank you take care Tom all right Alex and after the Ben Turk punt Brian Fields gets a carry Fields is the designated food tester for Jamel Berry who loves to cook especially pasta he has an Italian girlfriend and loves to cook pasta but he tries it out on fields the food taster <laughs> and the fields usually gives a, a look of approval or disapproval when he uh, samples the Jamel Berry 
cuisine. That's what you do to me on Thursday nights, Tom. <laughs> huh? Trying to get me out of my steak. I don't leave you much uh, <laughs> after the taste. There's a conversion for the Broncos as the pass goes to Nunez. Goes down to a knee to pick it off above the turf. First down for Western Michigan. Now, I thought Jimmy Clausen made an interesting point about his buddy here, the quarterback, Dane Christ, and the game slowing down. And Dane told us yesterday when we talked about the game slowing down, what was the term he used? He said it's an unconscious competitiveness that comes out when the game slows down for you. After Western Michigan's initial first down of the second half, the Broncos go to Nunez again. Gain on first down for the Broncos. A minute 30 left and ticking in the third quarter. Broncos now have a second down and six yards to go. And the Irish showing blitz. Standing in the pocket, Carter has it dropped by Arnheim. I was impressed then, though, with the big guy standing in the pocket and delivering the pass. Had faith in his protection and stepped up and delivered. Really did. They had a late rotation to cover three, and he stays in the pocket, steps up like a veteran quarterback into the belly of the pocket, delivered the football, put it on Arnheim. Good play by Darren Walls. Third down and five. Short drop and the slant caught, but looks like it's going to be short of the first down. Nunez. Uh, they're probably, well, it looks like the punt team is coming on the field. Fourth and short comes underneath. That's a really good catch with Gray draped all over him. And for Gray, nice to stop him short of the first down, putting armor in punt formation. Here's where you have to be careful and, and alert for fake. Fourth and two right around the 50. There's Armour's punt. Ooh, that's a beauty. Fair catch. Goodman makes it at the 20-yard line of the Irish. A 40-yard punt, but so high there was no return by Goodman. Well, there's Bob Diaco. Calabrese, who had done his haircut for him. Sierra Wood gets the fake and pass by Chris to be picked off on the deflection by Barry. Barry gets the deflected interception for the uh, Broncos. That was off uh, Ragone. Was that it, I believe? And Barry picked it off. Yeah. And you don't want to get sloppy. Okay. And this is a deflection crossing pattern. Dane's going to throw it a little bit behind, not too badly, but a little bit behind. And Jamel Burry makes the play. And very quietly, I think Jamel Burry, number 34, the, the, the rover they call in this defense, even though it's a 41-17 game, I think this kid's had a heck of a game, active both in the run and the pass game. Well, Chris had been hitting at a 67% clip until that deflection for the interception. So Carter trying to take advantage and comes out with a toss to Walker. His tight end on first down for a good game before Manti Teo catches him. Carter a little limping after taking uh, another hit. 6'5", 244 pound high school quarterback who committed and went to the University of Tennessee. And look at the hit Carter takes from Ethan Johnson. And that's a tough guy right there. He can play for me anytime. To beat up all day long and just keeps completing the passes. Carter lost the football, recovered by Notre Dame. Catherine Lewis Moore all over. Carter caused the fumble. Notre Dame has it. Catherine Lewis Moore will get credit for the sack. The obvious dominance and the concern from Bill Cubitt is the size and strength of the Notre Dame front seven versus his front. Kerry Neal with the fumble recovery. Turnover goes to the Irish. By Coke Zero, taste what's possible. And by ING.
And we told you a moment ago the clouds were moving in and they have done so with a vengeance with the uh, rain coming down and a little brief shower. Rain pretty heavily and there's uh, Joe Montana his wife Jennifer watching their son Nate take control of the Notre Dame offense. Nate played in the first game against Mon uh, against uh, Purdue hit eight of 17 and had an interception. Hands off here to Sierra Wood. Nice run by Wood. Spinning his way into Bronco territory, written down at the 40 yard line by Doug Wiggins. Nice run by Sierra Wood of 24 yards. And this is what they wanted to get out of today. They wanted Dane Chris to take a step ahead, and they want to continue to develop this kid who's a naturally gifted running back, patient enough to wait for the blocks and look at him in the hole. I mean, Tom, when you see him step out of blocks and make sudden cuts, it's instinct. And I was trying to say earlier in the game today, you either have that, you're born with it, and you continue to develop it, or you don't. And this kid is special in those areas. Nate Montana keeps after faking the wood. Back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard. Chris Prom was the tackler, along with Mario Armstrong. The last time we saw Nate in action was that Michigan game. Starting quarterback Dane Crisp went out. Tommy Rees came in. I thought Nate Montana did a pretty good job as he settled down into that game. It was it was a little rough at first. You see his numbers made a throw toward at the end of the first half that that angered Coach Kelly because he threw it out of the end zone instead of giving Michael Floyd an opportunity. But you know I thought the kid hung in there and made some plays. Yeah, I said he played against Purdue. It was Michigan, you're right. As he completes the pass to Ragone. So for Nate Montana who played that one other game against Michigan it was 8 of 17 that one goes for 12 yards to the tight end Mike Ragone <laughs> as Joe and Jennifer look from the sideline has to be a thrill for one of the all time NFL and Notre Dame greats. And you see look the resemblance that. can't you oh. see that helmet Tom it takes you back huh. For some reason, I'll always remember that cotton ball of Joe Montana's chicken soup game. There's Montana running. Couple yards. Jamel Berry. So, uh, Joe Montana, as we said, the Notre Dame quarterback, 74 to 78. That famous Cotton Bowl game that you mentioned. Yeah, against Houston, and I'll never forget the way he brought them back, and he was sick and had the chicken soup, and there he is against USC. And it, I love the fact that he was only a third-round draft pick, and he was too small and too this and too that, and ended up as one of the greatest of all time. His son, Nate, now directing the Notre Dame offense. Toss it to Wood. And Sierra Wood taking advantage of the playing time today is having the biggest game of his career. Mario Armstrong stops him right at the first down marker. That's a gain of eight. It will be just short of first down yardage. We talked about trying to get him plus or minus 15 touches today. I know he's got nine or ten runs. I think he's got three catches, so he's getting into that range. And Tom, you can see the natural ability. He's explosive. Ten carries for 91 yards. Montana again keeps after making the fake. Nate Montana. First so down, yeah. Nate Montana totes it for the first. Stopped by Chris Prom. I don't know if dad likes the runs as much as he'd like to see him put it in the air, huh? <laughs> you know, anybody out there that's had a son or a daughter play Little League Baseball and, and have to pitch or, or, you know, get out there where everybody's looking at them, take that feeling and magnify it by about a million. And, and that's what you have when your son is playing quarterback at the school where you were an All-American. I guarantee you that Joe is more nervous about Nate on the field now than he ever was when he had the pads on. And they have another son, Nick, who's a quarterback at the University of Washington. Nate picked up the first. You know, the Notre Dame is one of only two schools in the entire country, LSU being the other one, that started off their season with six consecutive contests against BCS schools. 
And now they get a chance to play Western Michigan. And what I like is now you get a chance to integrate some of the kids that have been working so hard for so long and give them a taste of game action. Stopped for a loss that time by Prom. Montana dragged down behind the line. Yeah, that probably should have been a give instead of a take. But a couple of guys that have stood out for me for Western Michigan defensively for their coordinator, Dave Cohen, have been Jamel Burry, 34, has made plays all over. Chris Prom comes in in a nickel package, has done an extremely good job. I think they've hung in there all day long. Montana rides a wood, then hands it to him. A couple yards to the original line of scrimmage. Zajac and Barry clamp down on uh, Sierra Wood. Wood, the prep All-American from Santa Clara High School in Oxnard, California, All-Stater. He, as a senior, gained over 1,600 yards, 20 touchdowns, also played cornerback and punted. As a junior, rushed for 2,600 yards, and as a sophomore, 1,400. So the credentials coming in. And Nate Montana handing it off many times to Wood, and then sometimes faking the handoff. And Keeping as he did there and blasted. He's been taking a pretty good beating. <laughs> but he's been bouncing right back up. So here comes the field goal unit. And a week ago, they kicked a 50 yard field goal rougher. And I identified the holder as Ben Turk. And Ryan Cavanaugh was the holder on that, number 50, and did an unbelievable job on a poor snap. And I want to make sure people understand that Ryan Cavanaugh is the holder. Matter of fact, the snapper. Bill Flavin. Flavin, all three of them in this operation are walk-ons, and they have some fun with it, Tom. So Ruffer with his Notre Dame record string of consecutive field goals adds to the count. That is 17 straight without a miss in his Notre Dame career. The walk-on kicker succeeds again with his walk-on crew of Kavanaugh and Flavin. And uh, may even petition for a sixth year because of multiple knee injuries. Here's Carter finding a man wide open. It's Nunez to the five yard line and lost the football. And Western Michigan, Nunez got it back. And Nunez, who's probably the fastest receiver on their team, ran right by McCarthy. There's Nunez. Just going to come right down the field. Get the safety turned one way, force him to open his hips, and then run away. Young safety will learn from that. Good route by Nunez. Dan McCarthy beaten for 48 yards, setting up a first and goal at the six-yard line. Carter changing the play. Still plenty of time on the play clock. For the end zone. Off the fingertips of Trey Smith. Wow. Trey, and that's what he wanted, the isolation. He had his six foot four, 222-pound wide receiver isolated on freshman Low Wood. Woods 5'10, 178. That is as good a throw as you can make in the red zone. And Trey Smith has to catch the football. Couldn't hold on. Should have been a touchdown. It's second down and goal. Six-yard line of Notre Dame. Irish with a lot of backups on the field. Carter chased through it behind his intended receiver, Drake, and incomplete. Well, the Broncos getting some uh, big stage experience today as they come to Notre Dame Stadium. And of course, they'll be hoping to contend for the MAC title. They play at Akron next. They're one and one so far in conference play. Very, very young team. Will compete in the map. 
Third and goal from the six. That play blown dead. First charge timeout of the half, Western Michigan. So Western Michigan calling the timeout, which blows the play dead with 5.53 on the clock. So we mentioned uh, that the Broncos travel to Akron next and for Notre Dame. Well, in two weeks, they'll take on Tulsa. Then November 13th, the 11th ranked Utah Utes come to South Bend. And of course, the big November 20th primetime game at Yankee Stadium, Army and the Irish. All of that's only on NBC. So Brian Kelly and the Irish, big favorites today and spotty performance in some places, but getting the job done, taking care of business, which is what they needed to do after going three and three in that tough first six games of the season. Yeah, they held serve, just like we talked about at the top end of the broadcast. And now you've got to prepare for Navy, who's a better football team again than people think they are. Here's the reverse. Wanted to pass the ball and finally did. <laughs> that play was ugly. And it found wound up being in the arms of Dallas Walker. <laughs> who comes away with a little sod on his head. <laughs> Robert Arnheim on the reverse. There it is, the flip to Arnheim. He says, uh-oh, we got a problem. Now what? Oh, there's May a white shirt. Mayday, he passed it <laughs> over his head. The no-look pass to <laughs> Dallas Walker, who wished he hadn't. <laughs> He's really lucky that didn't go 85 yards the other way. Potter, a field goal attempt from 26 yards. Second charge time out of the half, Western Michigan. And WMU is going to take a, another timeout. They had to get their 11th player in, who happened to be Dallas Walker, who just had that sod above his helmet. Forgot he was on the field goal team, I guess. So, Brian Kelly, as you said, uh, a unique challenge as they take on uh, Navy and their option attack at the New Meadowlands Stadium uh, next week. Then back home for Tulsa, a week off before they face the 11th ranked Utah Utes. And then to Army and to USC to close out the season. And you've been saying, I think, Mike, that uh, they can win all those games left. Oh, I think they can compete with every team left on their schedule. The only one ranked is Utah. They have an open week prior to Utah, and Utah has to play TCU that week. So the schedule really favors Notre Dame. Here's Potter with the kick, sneaks it by the right upright. And the field goal by Potter from 26 yards is good. Meanwhile, tight end to Dallas Walker taking home a souvenir from Notre Dame <laughs> Stadium. <laughs> Monopoly is back at McDonald's. And this year, one in four wins. So every peel could be the one. Monopoly at McDonald's, the simple joy of winning. I love caring for my family, but even I can't do it all. So I got ADT Pulse. Now I do things like arm my home security system right from my phone. Introducing ADT Pulse Solutions, a new way to help protect and manage your home remotely. But we learned the real value of ADT when someone tried to break in. ADT got the alarm and notified the police. It's good to know ADT helps protect our home and the most important people in it. Now save $250 on new ADT Pulse. Visit ADTPulse.com. U.S. Bank can meet all your business's financial needs, helping you reach new heights. From business lending to payment services, equipment financing to commercial real estate, to the personal banking needs of every employee, U.S. Bank offers the expertise and stability you deserve. Whether your business is global or your world is local, you don't just get one of us, you get all of us serving you. U.S. Bank. Sunday night. Colts, Redskins, you got Manning on one side, you got McNabb on the other side. Two of the better quarterbacks in the league. Sunday night is football night. Only on NBC. A lot of smiles around Notre Dame Stadium today as the Irish, for the first time in their history, playing a team from the Mid-American Conference. 
and leading Western Michigan 44 to 20. It will be the third straight win for the Irish and put them over 500 at four and three. Irish kind of anticipating an onside kick only one deep. But Potter kicks it away into the arms of Wood. Uh oh. Look who made the tackle, the kicker. It was Potter who is the top <laughs> tackler for Western Michigan, and he saved the touchdown that time with uh, the speedy Wood about to sprint for the end zone. <laughs> I saw a gap in coverage, and I'm like, uh oh, and here comes that kicker again, Potter. How many career tackles does this kid have? 25, I think it is, on the kickoff. 23. I mean, this guy has more than twice as many tackles as anybody in the history of Western Michigan as far as kickers on kickoff coverage. He's a tough kid. Potter does a little bit of everything, including that uh, special teams play. Also has a rushing touchdown on a fake and came into today's game leading the Mid-American Conference in scoring. Meanwhile, the Irish will take over. And Tommy Reese will come in at quarterback. Handing to Robert Hughes. So Tommy Reese at quarterback played against Michigan, had two pass attempts, and one of them picked off. There's what he did at Lake Forest High School. He is a freshman from Lake Forest. Also played basketball, was a ball boy for the Chicago Bears. His dad, Bill, and a Assistant at UCLA in the front office for the Bears. Also has worked for Cleveland, San Francisco, and Kansas City. And Reese, the freshman, just 18 years old, won't be 19 until May. Hand off to Hughes. You know, the education just never stops. It doesn't matter whether you're in the classroom, you're in your practice field. Look at Brian Kelly talking to the freshman. Slow down. Let the clock go. We don't have to be in such a pace now. We're winning 44 to 20. And, and that's what it is when you're a freshman. That's part of the education. And Brian Kelly coaches his quarterbacks hard, but they all get it. And they all get better because of it. Better hurry up now. They're down about six on the play clock. clock. See if Tommy notices. Yeah. Nice pupil, huh? Yep. Wow. You sprints free and gets the first down. When you talk about a running back dropping his pad level, that was an example. And the defensive back, Petway, watch for Petway take a big hit from the 240 pound tailback. Pad level drops, bang. Look at the head snap back on Petway, who's a freshman defensive back and weighs 177. And that's one of the reasons they like Robert Hughes so much. They trust him. They trust him in pass protection. They trust him not to put the ball on the ground. And Robert Hughes is just one of those really solid all around players. Notre Dame with some players in the game we don't always see. Mike Golick Jr. and his brother Jake Golick are in the game as Hughes runs again. Bennett Jackson, Daniel Smith, and Austin Collinsworth getting some playing time from scrimmage. We've seen him on special teams, but on the field here with the offensive unit. Well, yeah, there's one of the Golics, right? Yeah, Mike Golick Jr. A lot of famous dads around here. You walk around <laughs> practice and then you, your head snaps around. Joe Montana, and Mike Golick, or Uncle Bob Golick, Chris Collinsworth. How'd you like to coach that crew of people and have dad dad watching? Huh? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Kid, That's pressure. Up to, I was here this summer. I kept looking around going, man, Brian, Brian's got to be really comfortable in his own skin watching all these guys walk around. Reese, handoff, Hughes. Robert Hughes spins away from the top. Oh, he's still on his feet. Robert Hughes. What a nice run by Hughes, the senior from Chicago. 29 yards on that one. And the Hughes from the crowd here at Notre Dame. And Mike Golick, number 57, is the guy with the key block. Watch him pull out and get out in front of Hughes and seal the inside on the linebacker. He turns in, there's the seal block, and Hughes does the rest. Look at this. 
Looks like he was riding one of those Bronx in the rodeo that he loves to do. <laughs> really good blocking up front. Better movement skills than you would expect for a guy that weighs 245 pounds. They're loaded at tailback. Be Hughes again. Cuts up. Gets positive yardage before he's tackled by Dex Jones. And the big defensive tackle, the freshman Trabante Bowles, who's about 5'9 or 10, 320. Got in early and disrupted that play. <laughs> Our first down line brought to you by Xerox. So with the seconds ticking away. They'll just take a knee. That's the victory formation, and the Irish will have beaten Western Michigan in the first meeting since 1920. And the first meeting ever since the MAC was formed in 1947 between the Irish and a Mid American Conference team. Notre Dame in the first half rushed for a minus four, 156 in the second half, as the two coaches who have faced each other in the MAC, and also when Brian Kelly was at Cincinnati. With a couple of smiles and a handshake at midfield. And Bill Cubitt and his Broncos of Western Michigan, Michigan. Nothing to be ashamed of today as they hung with a favorite Irish on a foreign soil. But uh, Notre Dame outmanned them and just had uh, too much for the Broncos, who were hurt by turnovers and big plays performed by the Irish. Notre Dame wins its third in a row, and on the season, they go to four wins. Four up and three down for Notre Dame as they head to the Meadowlands to face Navy next week. Let's go to Alex. Well, Coach, I don't know you all that well, but you were as frustrated as I've seen you after the first half of football here. What's your takeaway from this game? Well, we just have to understand who we are, and, and we're not a great football team, but if we play hard and we do the things that we coach you to do, you'll be fine. They played great in the second half, gave up maybe 35, 40 yards in total defense. And then offensively, we, we did what we had to do. I thought Dane, you know, played much better in the second half. And, and again, it's the maturation process of a team understanding that you know, Western Michigan is going to come in here and play their very best. You can't go around and muck it around like we did in the first half. All right, so who are you? Well, I think our kids understand that they have to pay attention to detail. They're, we're not a super football team. We're a good team if we pay attention and, and really are disciplined. We were not disciplined. We had more penalties in the first half than we had all year. We'll let you go. Thanks, Coach. As the strains of uh, the alma mater, Notre Dame, our mother, echo through Notre Dame.